I'm an engineer that I love to fix things and do things around the house. I love projects. My, my father taught me well, gave me a good work ethic, and so I'm always working on something. I'm not a TV junkie. I'm here tonight to tell you about the journey that I've been on, on how to lower my energy usage and show that it can be done, small steps at a time. Oh, shoot, sorry. So I grew up in the uh, President Jimmy Carter days when there was an oil crisis. And here you can see Jimmy, uh, President Carter, uh, showing and demonstrating solar power and how they put solar pa panels on the roof of the White House. Um, he was a glass half full type of person. He was trying to demonstrate and get things done. And that's what I'm trying to do also. <coughs> During his era, he got initiatives going to put solar panels on many of the houses around the country. And at those times, it wasn't the, the PV panels that you see today or the photovoltaics. This was just a simple air panel. And some people in the industry just call them the Carter panels. And they're still on houses today. They're very simple. It's just a fan that's blowing hot air. And they work. My journey started back in 1980, 40 years ago when I was going to RIT to college. And I actually took an environmental energy conservation course. I don't remember what the exact name was at the time, but I remember two principles that I learned. One was house orientation. You know, as you go to these Homerama homes and you look at those, they look nice from the street, but sometimes they totally forget the concepts that are out there on how to save energy with no more money. You just gotta orient the house correctly. You know, put that garage on the north side to protect it from the, from the cold on the north. Make sure that you've got on the west all that driven rain and that um, low angle evening sun. Put a porch on there to protect the house from that. The porch is not there just to sit pretty and for you to sit on. It's there to protect the house. You know, put those big windows, those big homorama windows on the south side of the house. Don't put them on the north side of the house. Then people are just gonna put curtains up because they feel this cold air coming through. You know, Put your kitchen on the east side of the house so you get that morning sun. You know, these are simple things that you can do. It's, it's not possible to do it with every house, but at least try to incorporate some of these ideas that cost no money and they save you energy. This is the back of my house on the south side. And you can see I've got windows and I've actually got what's called a trombe wall, a French term for an interior wall that's concrete, that's a big energy absorbing um, thermal mass that's painted black. And here it is from the inside. So it's basically the back of my fireplace. So when we get all that sun that's coming in in the winter that it's a nice low angle, it's heating that black wall up and heating that thermal mass. That thermal mass then keeps the room warm and stabilizes the temperatures. You know, having a mass like this in my, my house now, this time of year, I don't have the heat on in the morning and the air conditioning on in the afternoon. If your house is like that, then you, then you should make some changes. As I travel internationally for work, I'm reminded that the United States and the American life is wasteful. You know, you go to Europe, they don't have two, three cars. They've got one car. They don't have two, three TVs, one in every room. They've got one TV. They still have the good life in that they have a cell phone and they have good food and the European life is good. But they're probably using less than half the energy that we are per capita. As I fly into Copenhagen, Denmark, on my way to my home office, which is in Sweden, you see all of these wind turbines out in the ocean. That's where they should be. Where do we put our wind turbines? We put them out in Wyoming, hundreds and hundreds of miles from the use of a big city. 
You know, you need those wind turbines close to the city so you're not transferring and losing all that energy and all these electric lines. So we have to rethink what we're doing with the environment and take note of what other worldly par parties are doing. When I came back from one of these trips and saw these wind turbines, I said, you know, I can do that. Um, it was cheaper at the time, this is 12 years ago, it was uh, PV panels were still very expensive. So wind turbines was a good option. And you know, if you think back 15, 20 years ago, people were putting up wind turbines. And so I actually took a six day course on how to build one. Because everybody I talked to says, after 10 years, that wind turbine basically self-destructs because it's out there in the environment, you know, getting all those wind. And so if you build it yourself, you know how to fix it yourself. And so I actually went to Wisconsin, the northern part, and met some really interesting people. These were backwoods people from Colorado, way up in the mountains. Wind turbines were their only means of power. So I learned a lot from them. So when I came back from this uh, seminar and ordeal, I actually built my own. And so here I have a 10-foot wind turbine that's up 60 feet, and I call it my battery charger. It's also something really fun to watch. You know, you can see what direction the wind's coming from, and you know when you're making power and when you're not. And you know that you're really helping save some energy because you can just see it, you know, when that wind turbine's really spinning. I wanted more. So talking to these guys, um, some of them for the, were from the UP. You know what that is? It's the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. A very rural area. And again, these people up there, they were living off grid. And so I came back with the idea, I don't need the power company, I can go off grid myself. So I actually went out <coughs> sorry, and uh, bought a very large battery. So this is like 80 car batteries, it's very large. It weighs 3,000 pounds, and now I can actually go off grid for a couple of days at a time when we have that next ice storm, when we have that power failure. And it works very well. I wanted more, so every year I've been trying to do small steps. Well, this was a pretty big step back in 2007. So 11 years ago, I actually put up some solar panels. and. I had heard at the time, you know, it's not really the best to put them on your house because these things last for generations. Bell Laboratories built these back in the 1960s and they're still working today. So why would you put something that's gonna last 50 years on a roof that's only gonna last 15 years? So if you do put solar panels on your roof, put a metal roof on it first. As I uh, went over to uh, Shanghai, um, we've got a plant out there, so I went over several times to China. And very different life over there than it is in Europe. You know, they have less money, um, more poverty, and the houses there are smaller and they're all very tight together. Many people in one small house. But what you notice on every one of these roofs with this solar panel, and it's like, how can these people afford a, a photovoltaic solar panel? And then I find out, no, that's just a hot water heater. So the actual hot water heater there, you can see at the top, is outside on top of the house, and they have a panel that's absorbing that sun and heating that hot water. So some days, if there's not much sun, I guess they're taking a cold shower. <laughs> but you can see in the lower uh, slide, that's my house, our house, where we put on some of these solar panels um, that circulates hot water and it works very, very well um, for about seven months of the year. It's paying, it's uh, providing all the hot water that I need, our family needs. So as I've said, it's small steps. Every year I'm doing something. So I have a barn, you know, I'm Mr. Fixer, I gotta have a barn, um, put my tractor and things like that. So I put some more solar panels on that, and that has a metal roof. Um, I have, I have a, a electric golf cart that I call my yard cart. And you can see there, I've got a solar panel on the top. I just leave this outside in the sun during the day. I come home in the evening, and I gotta take some tools down to 
the mailbox or something. Um, I just jump in, it's quiet. I never have to charge it. It works great. They do it down in Florida. One of the things that I've done from day one is try to educate and share what I've done, share this journey that I've been on. I've made some mistakes. You know, the, the Carter air panels, they don't work that great, but they work. Um, you're better off today putting in PV panels. You're better off today putting on a metal roof and insulating and getting that um, energy audit. But what I tried to do in this slide was, you know, from many years ago, I was on the national solar tour. So every October, all around the nation, there were these local tours of people that were doing solar and passive solar and trying to educate. And for the first few years, I was getting a large turnout. You know, today, we don't really do those tours anymore because people know now, you know, their neighbor down the road has solar, so it's, it's not as big and newer thing anymore. But I still try to educate. Um, just coming up this week on Wednesday, I've actually got one of the classes from Honey Falls coming to my house, and uh, we're gonna educate them there with some hands-on, and uh, it'll be great education. Some of the other things that I've done, I talked about doing a um, audit, energy audit. So you can see in the top slide there, that's an infrared camera view. And you can see over one of my daughter's bedroom windows, a big red spot. What's that mean? That means the contractor did a shoddy job. You know, he didn't insulate that very well. So at least by seeing that on a picture like that, you can educate the homeowner and say, that's where your problem is. You should try and fix that. That will save you energy. The lower picture is my metal roof on my main house. Well, I didn't go just any metal roof. I really looked into it and um, educated myself on roofing. And what I did is I went to an aluminum roof, or because I'm British, I said aluminum roof. And it's made from Coke cans, 90% recycled Coke, Coke cans. So it's a little pricey, but the other thing that it has is it has a special coating on it um, that the Army developed that reflects energy. So my, my attic stays cooler. So this last year, we did the big dig. You know, I decided that no more oil. We have two big oil tanks in our basement. I said, you know, I've got to get away from this oil. Um, our furnace, 25 years old, it was time to replace it. So we went geothermal. So it, it is a big ticket item, but by the time you do the rebates and you think about how long it's going to last, it will pay for itself. And it's a feel good. And it's very comfy because I don't have to worry about setback thermostats and all that. The temperature in the house is always 69 degrees. My floors are heated, so you can walk around on your bare feet and you can feel the warmth coming up because it's a low temperature heat. It's not 180 degree heat, it's 110 degree heat. So it, it heats the floors. It really works good. So this is kind of a summary of where I am. So I started this journey, well, 40 years ago. We built the house 25 years ago. I did the orientation idea 25 years ago, but couldn't really afford to do anything else at the time. And then over the last 12 years, step by step, I've tried different things. And we've got our heating bill down from like $4,000 a year to under $1,000 now. I've gone from burning 800 gallons of fossil fuel a year to zero. You know, I'm using less electricity. So I'm living the good life. I've been able to afford it. I'm not a rich guy. You just have to do it in bite sizes and have a plan. And as long as you're going to stay in your house 10 years, it makes sense. It's actually better in my mind than putting all your money in the stock market. You know, put it in your house, it's your retirement plan, so that when you retire, you'll have money left over because this is saving me a lot of money, $3,000 a year plus. And I drive a Prius. <laughs> Not very classy. So this was my, half, my glass half full moment, trying to educate, and thank you.